Hey folks, this episode is a short segment of a full-length interview, an hour long with someone who you know, Ben Solens. And Ben has done so much for the EV community. We have all followed him for years and think very highly of him. So we were honored to have him on to chat with us. If you wanna watch the full interview, head on over to rivianstories.com. The link is in the description or just subscribe here. I'll be releasing these segments over the next couple weeks and you won't miss it if you just do that. Either way, we hope you enjoy these conversations as much as we did. And thanks again to Ben for joining us. Well, Ben, we're so excited to have you. And honestly, on our Rivian channel, I know you mostly about Tesla, but now we know that you've driven Rivian and you're having a, uh, some great experiences with it. And I would just like to say that you're probably responsible for me discovering Rivian three years ago. How that wow. works. This is how it works. So I was getting into Tesla, had scheduled a test drive. Then I went on to YouTube, start searching Tesla. Then I get introduced to Ben Solens. And I think then the YouTube algorithm pegged me and suggested the video for the LA Auto Show for Rivian in 2018. Yeah. You know what I mean? All yeah. of a sudden, like YouTube shoves this video in front of me and I discover Rivian. So honestly, it's partly your fault and or <laughs> you. That, You're uh, welcome. You're then, welcome. I'll take a 10% royalty. Thank yeah, you. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to kick us off with one question that most of our audience that knows you would be thinking of right away. You might hate the question, but here it goes. <laughs> so sure. you've owned the S, the 3, the X, the Y, the whole sexy lineup and you're very familiar with Tesla, you've done a billion videos over it, and then you get to drive the Rivian in Colorado for a long time. And I know that all of our audience is gonna ask you to compare the two, and I'm gonna leave it broad. You can answer that just strictly in driving experience, or you can color more broadly towards company, culture, and anything and everything in between. Mm. I'll, I will say that none of us three, we're, we're fans of Tesla. Jimmy has a Model S, you know, so we're not asking, we're not after any dirt. <laughs> we're not slamming sure, either. Sure. Uh, it's just an honest question about the top of mind feedback between the two. Yeah, I mean, I changed, you know, I don't know if you guys A-B test your titles and thumbnails much, but I do that on my videos. <laughs> and one of them that I went with, sometimes it's funny, it gets funny reactions to people. But one of the ones when I did the Rivian trip out in um, Breckenridge was, uh, this is the truck Tesla should have made. Mm -hmm. And I say that because there are so many details about it that just felt, it natural later literally like if tesla made a truck this is how it would feel mm. right how the screens were laid out something like getting into autopilot or whatever they call it it's like two taps down with the turns like it's the exact same <laughs> right so many details of it i was like oh this is perfect and i love that i mean when i first drove the mustang mach e i had the same feeling i'm like oh yeah they just copied a bunch of stuff tesla did because they, Tesla did it right mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and good job, right? Yeah. This That's how this works, right? Why is uh, every cell phone in the world look this way? <laughs> it's because Apple made the iPhone and it worked. And yeah. so everyone else was like, oh yeah, we'll do that. So so my first thought was like, this really was, uh, I mean, you, a Tesla inspired vehicle in, in so many ways. Mm -hmm. uh, now the rest of it, being a truck and being very truck-like and all the little driving dynamics to aspects of it and all the other things that they thought of, I thought were like above and beyond any any Tesla that I've ever had, right? Like if you guys remember, so back in the early days of self or smartphones, yeah, you had the iPhone and then you had the Android stuff that came out later. And the thing I loved about the Android stuff early on, uh, besides being like a hacker like I am, was that they thought of everything. So mm -hmm. when you bought the phone, it came with the perfect case for it, and it came with the charging stand, and it came with the thing for your car, and it came for the pl the cables and the plug. Every little possible accessory, because no one was making accessories for it yet, right? It was mm -hmm. brand new. That's kind of how I feel about Rivian. It's like they came out with this truck. The truck itself, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is what Tesla should have done, right? Mm -hmm. The Cybertruck, we'll talk about that later if you want, but, like, <laughs> that's not – that feels odd and weird. This feels like, oh, this is – this is totally what I would have expected. Mm -hmm. And then they had, you know, the center console speaker and the flashlight and, and all the little quirks and features that they have ar around around the vehicle that I thought were like, oh, this is they, they, they took it to that next level because, yeah, they're not Ford. 
coming mm. out with an electric truck. Like Ford doesn't have to make accessories for the F-150. <laughs> They've been doing it forever. There are bazillions of companies out there making accessories. So yeah. they really just took it to that next level. And I appreciated that because they still, I mean, you guys talk about them here and stuff, but I guarantee if I went down to a coffee shop nearby and asked 10 people who Rivian is, oh, yeah. maybe one person, maybe, Back, maybe. one person yeah. would have a clue. Um, yeah. So So they have this major headwind. So I think they need to do that. I think when they when they come out with it, they can't just be, oh, it's a truck and it's as good as this. No, they have to go above and beyond because, I mean, you have Ford and GM and all the big dogs coming in and, and it's going to be a real, a real choppy waters for them here pretty soon, I would say. Yeah. I know that a couple of your recent videos I really enjoyed, by the way. So the Lucid video and mm. I believe it was the Maki GT video. Yep. And just a quick compliment the the storyline yeah. and and the narration at the beginning i i really really enjoyed man that was awesome Mor morgan freeman better watch out ben <laughs> but you know you know here's a funny story about that i got sued by morgan freeman once um, no way. <laughs> yeah yeah this is a funny story so it was uh, april fools a couple years ago or something and Okay, so rewind my, my career in online education, right? Okay. Making online courses for data science-y things. All of us, I remember looking at the data when I was uh, at Pluralsight, when I, we had all these courses and I was uh, on the data team there. I was looking at it going, Australian people and British people always have way better retention rates. Mm -hmm. and, and we're like, well, it's just the accent, right? So we said, what if we could have Morgan Freeman just narrate like all of our things? <laughs> we just have the best retention rates in history. So... Fast forward to making covering EVs, and I hired a voice actor to impersonate Morgan Freeman reading the Tesla Model 3 driving manual. And it was like driving tips with Morgan Freeman. And and, and I, I even I took it to the next level because what we're doing is video. I hired a, an actor, an actual physical impersonator of him and went to L.A. and shot all these things. And it was very like, you know, you just see the side of his of his head or his hand doing a thing. And uh and and, th and then Morgan Freeman's people reached out and uh, sent me a cease and desist. And I was, I took it down. I, I don't care. But it was just funny because it was like, it was, to me, I was proud. Like, it was so well done. Oh, that legit, <laughs> like, because why else would they sue? Like, why else would they care if it was, like, comically right. not, you know? But yeah, anyway, so, yeah, that that's hilarious. I, back to your point, I, I really appreciate it. But yeah, there's this whole funny side about Morgan Freeman and, uh, getting a cease and desist for that. That's that's incredible, and that was totally unintentional, obviously. But that, that is too cool. So, with with getting hands on with some of well, actually now a wide range of electric vehicles, not just Tesla. Like, what do you think manufacturers are going to have to do to stand out in the space? Because we know we've heard some Rivian people say zero to sixty in three seconds isn't going to cut it here here in a few mm. years so i would just love to hear your thoughts on what what makes some of the vehicles that you've seen special yeah you know i think the the people that will have the hardest times are the rivians and the lucid of the world because they don't have the ability to scale um but they do have the ability to be different and stand out so they can do things that say a ford or a gm can't do right ford with the f-150 lightning cannot go weird on you Right. It'll just it, it, it even the Mustang Mach-E, as much as I love it, if I was a hardcore Mustang loyalist, I could see how this is just pure blasphemy, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. And people could really like now, granted, they sell like 20,000 Mustangs a year. So it's kind of like a who cares. Right. Compared. But the F-150 had to stay the way it is. So Rivian and Lucid can, you know, people that are startups in the space can use this as an advantage of they can do these, you know, uh, flashlight in the door handle or like little things like the, the camp kitchen, like becoming super niche and, and doing things different because they don't have this this legacy, this heritage of being a certain thing or a certain way. Um, so they have to, I would say. Lucid, uh, you know, I, I love who they're catering to. Uh, I think that th this car I'm not as excited about, but their battery tech and powertrains mm -hmm. are second to none. And so yeah. everything, like, yeah. if they can come up with the, like, sexy, sporty, 
$80,000 version of this and compete with Audi of the world? Oh, yeah. Like, you've got a real compelling product. But then, mm-hmm. but now you're in Tesla space, and Tesla has a giant fan base. And, you know, so now you're kind of a uh, – it become the, the, the water has become a bit more difficult to navigate there for a company like that. Um, so going into a space that's not super occupied, like trucks, like Rivian's doing, great. Being – Choosing a niche is a way that I think is helpful as well. Being the adventure truck versus like the construction site utility vehicle like the F-150 is, mm-hmm. is, is going to help. But scale is going to be a problem. You know, Ford already said that they've doubled their capacity for the F-150 Lightning. And I think they said last, I was just there out in Austin talking to them, and they said they have 150,000 plus reservations. They won't be able to fulfill all those next year. But I would put money on them getting out to maybe close to 100,000 F-150 Lightnings next year. And from there, it's just the sky's the limit, right? They can just start turning these factories over to doing electric trucks. And so because they have such a giant scalable like capacity. So, you know, the, the, the landscape is interesting right now. I'm glad that all these companies are going after different kind of buyer profiles, right? Lucid's going after the, the super wealthy kind of fancy luxury side. Uh, Rivian's going after the the more what you might call like lifestyle branded vehicles, right? It's it's not your construction vehicle, but it's it's meant to serve a purpose. And then you have the big dogs coming in with the the Silverado electric and the F one fifty electric, filling in kind of the majority uh, where most people are. I would say. Mm-hmm. So I think the future is bright here. If I were a company coming out today and wanted to do like say a, a thirty five thousand dollar mid size sedan, I would say I'd have a hell of a time beating the Model Three. Mm-hmm. Right. Or if I'm coming out with a crossover, uh, depending on who I am, I could have a real hard time with that. Right. But like we're going to get the Macan EV, the Porsche crossover yeah. electric. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the Porsche has a strong fan base. So it's funny. I mean, whether or not you're making media or whether or not you're selling cars, it's kind of a similar thing of like you need to build your audience and the mm-hmm. people that love you for you and take a stand on things. And like, this is what we do. Get those people there, and then you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, but you know, the Lucids and, and the Rivians and the any startups here. I mean, even even going full scale production, they're they're still just pint size in terms of the amount of vehicles they can make. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be a that's going to be hard to keep up when you have in three years Ford putting out a million electric F one fifties or whatever they start doing. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it's an exciting time. I think it's a the future is bright, and when I see the big dogs coming into this space, it just it really kind of gets me amped up about it because that means that we're actually crossing that chasm. We're going from the early adopters and the nerds like us to yeah. you know my my wife's dad who works in construction and is like, oh, well, you know, starts asking me questions. <laughs> oh, can I get this? Can I get that? So so the future is bright. I would say all around. Um, Companies that don't have that scale need to focus on a niche and just run with it and don't look back. Mm -hmm. All great answers. Jimmy, I'm going to kick it to you next. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of like a 30-second heads up that I'm kicking it to you next and just kind of so that we've talked along with others. I'm sure you have too, Ben, about this whole idea. with When scale comes to mind, we've seen this S1 report about Rivian and how much they'll be able to do out of normal, like 150,000 maybe. And then we see the ramp up and it's going to be slow. And then now we just know that the production hell term that Elon made famous, like that they're surely going to be up against it. And we don't necessarily have to talk about that now, but uh, I think that us Rivian fanboys uh, kind of see that that's this, that's the kind of cliff we're coming up to as far as jumping off. Yeah. And is Rivian going to make it to me? One of the biggest, brightest spots there is the Amazon deal. If they can deliver that too, because yeah, it just gives some uh, versatility there, but any thoughts on that? And then I'll kick it over to Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Rivian, um, you know, as long as they have money and a runway, 